Hi. Welcome to Sunday School again. I'm saying that it's good to see you, although you know that I'm talking virtually when I'm saying seeing you because right now I am only seeing myself in my monitor. This week I'm going to read two passages from the Bible and I want you to listen and see if you can discover what is the word that I'm looking for when I'm talking about these two passages. The first one comes from Matthew 19 verses 16 through 22. Then someone came to Jesus and said, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? And he said to him, Why do you ask me what is good? There is only one who is good. If you wish to enter eternal life, keep the commandments. He said to him, Which ones? And Jesus said, You will not murder, you will not commit adultery, you will not steal, and you will not bear false witness, you won't tell lies. Honor your father and mother also. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, I have kept all those things. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you wish to be perfect, go sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and then come follow me. When the young man heard this word, he went away grieving, for he had many possessions. He was very rich. The second passage from the Bible is from John 11, verses 17 through 21. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. These are two very different stories, but they have something in common. The people that were dealing with Jesus were disappointed. They were disappointed for different reasons, but nonetheless, they felt a sadness about what he had said or had done or not done in their expectations. So let's take a look at the word disappointment. Let's look at some possible definitions. So disappointment can be sadness over having one's hopes or expectations not fulfilled. A frustration from a person or an event that let you down and distress over something that happened unexpectedly. Now of course during this time we all can say that we have felt disappointment, or sad, we have dismay. A lot of stuff's going on that we wish weren't. And we want things to be back the way they always have been and what we're used to. So let's see how the pandemic has affected us in some ways. I'm sure there are a lot more ways than what I'm going to show you here. So the first is 
it has affected us in terms of school. School is now virtual, and that's a hard thing, and especially for people who are in their senior year. We have physical distancing from friends and from family. Our activities are limited. Everything seems to be disrupted. Social activities aren't what they used to be. We don't have the after school habit patterns of going and hanging out with our friends or going to a place to find some place to study. Home has changed. It's now our parents' office or our playground or our in dine, in, inside dining area. Conversation now is mostly through technology. And traditions and special events are memories for now. Things like weddings or homecoming dances. Some are postponed or canceled. People deal with disappointments differently. Some take disappointment harder than others. For some, disappointment lasts longer than it does for others, or comes and goes more often. So, let's think about what can we do if we have disappointment. One of the first things that might be a good idea to try is to just acknowledge that you have it and share your thoughts with someone that cares about you. You can seek advice from someone that you know has a positive outlook on life and healthy ways of coping and dealing with things when, when you feel discomfort. Go and talk to them or call them on the phone. Use your imagination and creativity and come up with different ways to accomplish some of your goals, even though you can't do it the same way that you used to. View disappointment as a temporary state that's going to change over time and maybe will even become a growth experience for you. Ask God for insight and patience to help you deal with this time when everything is different. And remember that being disappointed does not mean that you cannot work towards being happy or content. So I'm going to use a personal experience to show you what I mean about using creativity to deal with disappointment. About a month and a half ago, I decided that for the first time, I was going to try to grow a tomato plant. And Dave and I talked about it, and we decided that we're going to do it inside. We have a kitchen window that has a lot of light, and we thought, this will be the perfect place. And so I bought this tomato plant, and we watched it grow and grow and grow and when it got six feet tall I had to put it in the floor instead of the of the seat in the window and it continued to grow and it continued to have these darling blossoms which I took a picture of And I was so excited that I was going to be able to grow tomatoes. 
but only blossoms came and went. Not one tomato. So we thought, okay, maybe there's something wrong. We're doing something incorrectly. So I called the nursery and I said, hey, the tomato plant's not producing any tomatoes. And they said, well, you probably need to feed it. So I went and bought plant food. And they told me it needed calcium. Okay. So we put calcium on the tomato plant in the dirt. Still no blossoms. So we thought, okay, it's not getting enough sunshine. So we put it on the porch. And the tomato plant has grown and grown and grown. It's now probably seven and a half feet tall. And you know what? Still, no tomatoes. Not a one. A while back, I was very disappointed. I felt like I had failed. Then I decided, is there a story behind this tomato plant? Can't I perhaps use what I'm thinking about as a means by which to display or talk to others about my experience with the plant and how I can still continue to be happy, to think positively, and to recreate a story that may be a lot different than having sliced a tomato over a salad, but nonetheless a great story. So I decided to share this first story with you. So I always give you something to think about at the end of Sunday school, and today is no different. So what I'd like for you to do is come up with some of your own stories and lessons that you are learning in this time of dealing with so many disappointments. And write them down. Reflecting on things can be really therapeutic. And it can also be a great conversation piece at some point in time in the future. Have a good week. Be creative. Keep thinking. Be honest with yourself about your feelings. Talk to others who can help you with your disappointments. And turn some of those disappointing moments into reflective ones in which you can talk to others about lessons that you have learned. Blessings to each of you. Take care. Bye.